Hey everyone, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. Today's video I'm gonna do a hand history review, but I'm gonna mix in some lower stakes, so one KNL hands. So we'll kind of breeze through things faster than usual. Let me know if you guys enjoy the format or would rather, you know, slower one or two hands per video. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoy it. Okay, so first hand uh, raised by Vincent on the cutoff. Linus, one of the best players in the world. Three bets button gets four bet to a good size. I want to go roughly three X out of position and he calls. And we see an ace king eight two tone board. And uh, four bet pots, you always want to think how the board hits ranges. This smashes the four betting range. Anything that hits ace king smashes the four bet range. So Vincent gets to be super aggro. And uh, of course, he's still going to have like queens, jacks, tens, and some bluffs. So, you know, not super duper crazy the, the whole hand, but he starts out with a small bet, which seems correct. Probably betting his entire range. Checks the nine of spades turn. Bad turn for him because, you know, flushes gets that, get there. So that kind of shifts things around a little bit, Linus checks back, wherever he shoves for roughly pot, Linus calls and we see the hands. Vincent has 10-9 of diamonds and Linus has ace-5 of diamonds. We're going to do a quick analysis, 10-9 of diamonds, you know, low frequency 4-bet, always see bet flop, I would mostly barrel the turn, I don't think you're ever showing down a 9 and winning, but whatever, you can wait to the river to bluff, definitely bluff the jack, so overall well played hand. Ace-5 of diamonds by Linus. You no, know, pre-flop seems fine. Flop, of course, call. Turn feels reasonable to check back. You could also bet you get some value from queens, jacks sometimes, or, you know, just a small bet. It's a big pot. So just protecting your equity. And then a river call is kind of an interesting spot where this is a pure bluff catcher. You're going to have a few of those and generally want to call some of those in most situations. You could look at the board and say, what the hell is Vincent going to be bluffing with? And the answer would be, you know, 10-9 suited, pocket queens, pocket tens, jack-10 suited, queen-jack suited, those kind of hands. And the question is, is he overdoing it or underdoing it? And that's, you know, a question uh, that we can't answer, but hopefully Linus knows how to answer fairly well. You need to kind of know your opponent because some people will not even four bet 10-9 suited to begin with. Some people will be a bit scared to bluff showdown value even though these hands are clearly not there and, and this is 200-400 and yeah with that we will move on to the next hand but this is a hand we see Linus a lot calling with these you don't see the times he folds but this is a hand that should mostly fold sometimes call nothing too exciting. Second hand also four bet pot uh, calls one raises MP uh, same Vicente three bets from the button Call four bets big and keep in mind these guys are, are roughly 200 or even more than 200 deep. Vincent calls and we get a queen deuce four two tone board. So relatively good for the four better just because uh, ace, queen, king, queen get four bet from these positions. But not as good as had he had a king on the board. Either way, he bets roughly third pot, gets called, turn king. Excellent, excellent card for call. Now Ace King gets there, you get to barrel probably pretty much everything. So he barrels one third, gets called. River six, and he barrels one third again. One third rather than shove. Now you might think, you know, why? <laughs> and, and the answer is, you no. Know, sometimes you have a hand that's good enough to bet one third. It's not good enough to go all in. And you rather bet one third than check. A good example of a hand like this might be something like Ace King, where if you shove Ace King on the river, you're not really doing very well when you get called, but if you bet one third, things work out a lot better for you. So call bets, Vincent calls, roughly a 200 big blind pot in the end. So even though they were deeper displayed in terms of how much money went in like a normal four bet pot and call shows up with ace jack of diamonds, which if we think about it, four bets good, flop c bet is good, turn barrel is mandatory. And river bet is, how do you say, you know, you get to the river with a bunch of hands uh, because you're betting flop with most hands and you're betting turn with every hand. You get to the river with all of your range. Uh, and then you need to ask yourself, is this combo a better check or a better bluff? And you need to compare it to all the other hands in your range. I'd say it's certainly a reasonable bluff. Like I, I wouldn't want to see spades bluffing, but just seeing ace jack... I guess, you know, I'd, I'd rather have a suit that blocks king x suited, uh, so I'd rather not have specifically diamonds. 
And if you can have like ace five instead or ace ten instead, those feel like they would be a bit better. But it, it's like these are really marginal concerns. Overall, the hand is played okay. And Vicente, on the other hand, pocket eights, no spade. This is a hand that should probably be folding the flop with no spade. This is a, a bit tough to grasp, but in four bet pots, having eights and having threes is not very different, and you're up against a very strong range. So it's just not a very good hand with a Broadway on the board. In turn, you have to fold. I would guess if you put your opponents just in tie range betting, you would still get this folding every single time. And then River. I mean, River is kind of the most okay seeming street to call with eights, where you don't have much interaction with everything and you beat bluffs. So it can't be too bad. Of course, you would rather have a queen or a king in your hand and maybe even an ace in your hand. So I'm, I'm not sure it's a printing call, but I, I can see the logic behind river facing the small bet. Flop call is maybe a small mistake. I think turn call is a fairly large mistake here. Let's move on to the next hand. So now we're going to look at some 510 hands. This is BVB. OMFG sorry raises to 30. So three big blinds. Wacko calls, and it, it's funny to look at these after looking at 40k pots, and we see Ace King 4 Rainbow, so very good board for the small blind for the Razor because of the Ace and the King. He bets small, indicating he's betting his entire range. Wacko calls, and he checks the turn, and the Wacko already fires an overbet on a 3, which is actually an interesting play. It's actually more of a high stakes move. I think, uh, I would think 510, you would not see many people overbet stabbing the turn. The play is fine. Uh, you do have hands in your calling range on the flop that want to go for stacks. And it's not like when you have a seven or king jack, you need to go for protection. So it makes sense to have a large size, but not everyone is used to it. So OMFG, sorry, calls. Six of diamonds river. He checks. The wacko over bet shoves almost three X pot. You get a call. And we're going to see the hands turned face up. So the wacko just has the turned nuts with deuce five of spades just well played and I, I mean this in a serious way though like it, it's well played but it's not trivially played like i think a lot of guys watching this video would probably not have gotten their entire stack in this is definitely what you're supposed to do if uh, you want to know why uh, check out uh, one of the sections in the redline course redline philosophy and practice on our website which talks about uh, bet sizing and specifically how and when to overbet Tired of seeing your red line plummet? Our red line course will help you understand what your opponents are doing and how to exploit their mistakes. Learn how to change your perception, deceive your opponents, overbet accurately, and much more. Sign up to start crushing today. Even though it doesn't touch on this exact spot, it will explain the logic of why this is a very good play. And OMFG Sorry shows up with Ace King, and that's also actually very well played. So very well played hand by both players, checking a trap on the turn. Maybe he was planning to check raise, but when his opponent polarizes so much, he he goes check hall and check hauls down. And this does seem like a hand that it, it's tough to imagine folding. So yeah, well played hand by everyone. No mistakes. Five ten guys. Uh, limit of the bet soon to be best players in the world next hand is button versus big blind three bet pot suni versus slap style suni raises to 25 slap style three bets to 120 and gets a call we get a 10 10 9 rainbow board slap style bets one third indicating he is betting his entire range i've said this a million times and this makes sense he has a range advantage pre-flop the board is kind of high high and bricky at the same time, so good board for him. Yeah, ace of spades turn. I'm not even sure who the card is good for. Slap style bet so small that soon he's probably continuing most of his ace x, but not all. And if slap style is betting all his ace x, maybe this is actually better for the big blind. Be that as it may, he checks, faces a half pot stab and calls, and here are the hands in his range, which would be in a tough spot on the turn. Would be something like, uh, you know, king, queen, king, jack, uh, maybe 9x or pocket 8s. And I, I assume kings, queens, jacks would always call the turn bet and have a tough decision on the river. And river he checks, 
face is a pot size shop, decides to call. The hands show down are 6 8 of spades for Sunni. I think this is probably too loose pre flop. If I had to guess, not super familiar with every rake structure, but given the large 3 bet, this seems like too loose of a continue. Flop is fine, turn is fine slash good as is river. Uh, so nothing too special to say about post flop. Pre flop, I think, is a bit loose. Slap style, ace 4 of diamonds, so good 3 bet, good C bet, natural turn check call. Then on the river, we have one of these spots that we've seen a million times throughout my videos where, you know, when our opponent shoves, he's not shoving anything worse than ace four for value, only better hands. So even though you have a, a nice hand, it is a bluff catcher. And then uh, we need to think about the properties of this as a bluff catcher. Is the four good or bad? And is the ace good or bad? And how does this compare to our other bluff catchers? And here, you know, this is a relatively good one, uh, considering, you know, if you have trips, of course you call. Next best hand seems to be something with an ace, because an ace unblocks bluffs. You know, your opponent needs two cards to bluff, and he's not bluffing with an ace. It might block some value bets. Uh, maybe our opponent shoves ace king, ace queen sometimes, like this. I, I wouldn't be sure but maybe. So it seems like a good bluff catcher, and I, I would guess that this is maybe an always call in theory. This is a BVB3 bet pot, Crocdy versus Soy de Minami. We'll call him Crocdy and Soy. So Crocdy raises a small blind, calls a 3 bet, and we get an A6-7 two-tone board, which goes check, check. Now we've been seeing lots of C bets in 3 bet pots. BVB is of course different than other positions because the big blind is three betting a more polarized range. It means it's got more trash in it because he's both in position and closing the action, which is rare in six max. Usually you either three bet out of position or if you three bet in position, you're not closing the action. So that means we're going to see less C bets in general, BBB. Jack of spades turn and Croc D fires out with an overbet. And this is actually a good sizing, I think. Definitely a reasonable one. And again, a kind of sharp technical play that we're seeing. A Soidy calls him. River 9 of diamonds, so flush gets there. Crocdy shoves, Soidy calls. You're gonna see the hands. Crocdy with a 5 6 of clubs. And I have to say, I don't like this very much. I have a feeling uh, the turnover bet is not good with this hand. I think having the 6 is not relevantly blocking anything in a good way for you. Like you would want your opponent to have a 6. Uh, sixes or 2 pair with a 6 is not in his range. So this is kind of a, a fairly random hand to bluff with. And not a hand that does it well, you know, because you could check down and sometimes win with 6-5 of clubs. Uh, so I think turn is, is actually a blunder. And then river is kind of like river is okay. Uh, you would rather have a diamond. No other cards I can think of. So you'd rather have a diamond. It seems okay not to have a diamond. And then like you definitely don't have any showdown value anymore by the time you got called versus your turnover bet, which is why the turnover bet is such a blunder with, with this strong of a pair. Uh, and then river seems all right. Then we have Soidi calling the jack nine. I mean, three bet jack nine off is fine. Check back flop is fine. Call turn. I am not personally sure if this is okay or not. Um, this might be a bit too loose and it might be fine. I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Calling the river. I mean, I wouldn't fold two pair on the river because I'm not sure enough how ranges are going to play. And I'd be a bit worried, you know, maybe my opponent shoves something like 6-7 or ace-queen. Like how big of a thing is the flush getting there? And so, so I, I think I'd always call jack-9. I'm not sure if it's like a value call or a bluff catcher. Definitely it's a reasonable bluff catcher. I think this is actually worth looking at. And we have just about enough time to do that really, really quickly in PO Solver. So we'll do that and then wrap up the video. BVB I went with a half pot C bet, and we see just a 43% bet frequency on A7-6. As we discussed, Jack-9 checking back is fine, and I think it was Jack of Spades' turn. And we can see that the out-of-position player overbetting is a good size. 
6.5 actually does make it in there, even though this is very, very rare. We can solve from here for high accuracy. And we see 6.5 disappearing uh, almost completely. So this is not a real thing, but it's not as far off and as big of a blunder as I imagined. It's actually fairly reasonable, maybe because of the low kicker. So we see 6.4 can bet. And then the thing is that, uh, you know, your opponent's worst pair is a pair of sixes. And then the four kicker actually is just getting better paired hands to fold. It's not really getting, you know, there are not many worse paired hands. And the showdown value is lower than I thought personally. So we see the turnover bet, a uh, hand like jack, jack nine off is just a mix here. Uh, it can call or fold, they're both fine. And then if we get a random uh, nine on the river, actually not a random, nine flush on the river, 6x should definitely shove, even though the EV is marginal, because the card is good enough that you just shove everything. And then something like Jack 9, and, and this is also something I suspected, it is actually just a pure bluff catcher, because out of position does not shove worse for value. Something like Ace Queen would go smaller, and something like 6 7 would almost always go smaller. And then Jack 9 ends up, it's roughly break even, but doesn't have to call, and you actually rather call hands uh, such as ace-8 with a diamond or ace-5 with a diamond, like more focused on blocking flushes and straights and hands like that rather than having two pair. All I can say is these 5-10 players are, are actually really good. All the plays in these hands were very, very sharp. So, well played. That's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.